Welcome to CSE Guru. The next topic we will discuss under operating system is computer system organization. To learn and understand the concepts of operating system, users should have a knowledge about the structure of the computer system. So the structure of the computer system includes computer system operation, storage structure and I.O. structure. So first in this session, we will discuss the computer system operation. The computer system will have one or more CPUs and a number of device drivers and a shared memory that will be connected through a common system bus. So the communication between the CPU and all its device drivers to access the memory, they have to access through the system bus only. The CPU and all its device drivers will execute in parallel. At the time, all the devices will execute. So, they will compete for this memory cycles in order to access memory. So, there will be a memory controller to synchronize all its activities. So, when there is a clash between this CPU and its, all its device drivers in the sense, the memory controller will regulate its activities. So, this is the structure of the modern computer system. So, generally, when the user switch on the system, the first program that loads into the memory is nothing but bootstrap program. This is the first program that will be loaded into the memory once the computer system is switched on. And this bootstrap program will be stored in ROM read only memory or EE ROM, electrically erasable programmable read only memory. So, this bootstrap program that is the initial program will be stored with ROM or EE ROM. And this bootstrap program only initiates all the aspects of the computer system from CPU registers and all its device controllers. Everything will be initialized by the bootstrap program once it is loaded into the memory. And this bootstrap program only will know how to load the operating system and start executing the system. In order to execute this goal, the bootstrap program must locate OS kernel. This is nothing but operating system kernel. All the system related programs will run only in the operating system kernel only. So, in order to execute this bootstrap program, it should be located into the OS kernel. That is, it should be loaded into the OS kernel memory. Once kernel is loaded in the sense, it provides service to system and all its users. So, this is the basic thing about the computer system. When any task is initiated by any of these disk drivers in the sense, for example, if disk initiates any task or any input output devices initiates any task in the sense, an event will be created. The occurrence of an event is usually signaled by an interrupt. So, when the device driver want to perform any task or any of the output devices, input devices, anything wants to perform any task in the sense, event will be created and this event is usually signaled by an interrupt. Okay. There are two types of interrupt. One is hardware interrupt and another one is software interrupt. And a hardware interrupt, if you are considering in the sense, it triggers the interrupt by sending signal to CPU through system bus. And a software interrupt in the sense, it will be triggered by executing a special operation called system call. Hardware interrupt in the sense, so through the system bus only, it triggers the interrupt by sending the signal to CPU. And software interrupt in the sense, it will be executed by a special operation called the system call. The system call we will study in second module. So, when CPU is interrupted means Immediately, it will stop its current executing process and transfers control to the and transfers control to the interrupted process. And this interrupted process will have a interrupt service routine. And this interrupt service routine only will consist of the starting address of the interrupted process. Okay, by locating its process address, process will start its execution. Once the process completes its execution. The control will be transferred back to the interrupted process of the CPU and it will resume its execution actually where it is stopped. So, this is the actual process of the interrupted service routine. So, every computer system will have a 
specific interrupt service architecture how to handle and carry out these interrupted process and to execute the interrupted service routine so this will be different for old system and new system usually these interrupts will have a table of pointers and that will hold the address of the interrupt service routine for various devices and it is called interrupt vector this interrupt vector is indexed by a unique device number in order to handle the interrupt request and the interrupt architecture also saves the address of the interrupted instruction indexed by its device number so this is all about interrupts and this is the interrupt timeline for a single process system see here cpu is there and io device is there so for example here they have given for input output device and here the user process is executing and this if you are considering in the sense io interrupt processing this interrupt will be raised by the device driver of the io devices okay so this is cpu that is it is executing its process whenever interrupt is raised in the sense it will be handled by cpu here okay and io device initially it will be ideal then whenever it has a request to perform any task it will transfer the interrupt signal here see here initially the cpu is executing the user process up to this line the cpu is executing the user process so whenever the io device wants to perform any task it will raise a interrupt request here it will raise an interrupt here okay and wait for the cpu it will raise an interrupt here and it will wait for the cpu once the interrupt request is handled by the cpu in the sense immediately it will stop the currently executing user process and transfer control to handle the interrupt raised by the io device so now the interrupted process will starts to execute okay so once its execution is completed in the sense cpu will, will be resumed back to its user process now cpu is executing the user process here again when the interrupt is raised by the io device in the sense it will wait for the cpu to process the interrupt and when it gets the cpu time to process the interrupt request it will be processed here once the request is completed again it will resume back to the user process okay so likewise only the interrupts will be handled so this is the interrupt timeline for a single process system if it is a multiple process system in the sense many devices will be connected here and many devices at a time it will raise the request and whichever cpu is available that will process its request so in this way only interrupts will be handled so this is all about computer system operation thank you for watching this video